let's talk about allocating resources. Now, this is, again, the million dollar question when it comes to cloud computing is how do we know we have the right deployment, but also the right amount of resources? And this is where, again, right sizing would come in. And it's not as easy as, you know, sometimes you would think. However, we need to size our deployment appropriately. So every application will have a different use case. For example, you're going to likely need more object storage than you might need, for example, relational type of storage. For example, you may want to use in Google Cloud, um, basically uh, cloud storage, or in AWS, you might want to use S3. But we need to determine how much we're going to use so we have an estimate. And this also is important, especially if we're going to migrate from on-prem to the cloud or uh, to another cloud provider, vice versa, right? Now, KPIs. We also need to look at matching our deployment requirements to the right provider. Now, some providers will meet your SLAs and some may not. When it comes to, for example, infrastructure as a service, it's pretty hard to get above four nines. That's about all that you'll get. On the other hand, there are some services such as Google Cloud DNS that has five nines of availability guaranteed, such as Cloud DNS. So it all depends, right? It just really depends on what you're trying to look for. Now, in most scenarios that I've ran into, getting above four is next to impossible. No one's going to guarantee you 100% uptime or really five nines uh, in most cases. Now, when it comes to our deployment models, we want to be aware, again, that if we're using a public cloud versus a private cloud, we're going to have different levels of an SLA, different levels of availability in a lot of cases. If we need to have anything special, we need to have um, you know, some kind of really uh, basically uh, detailed service that is customized, we may need to go with the private cloud. And then we already know the service models and each of these play, of course, their own um, risk and requirements. And again, it all depends on um, what your uh, requirements are. Uh, when it comes to SaaS providers, they generally handle the management. Platform as a service, this is a shared uh, service mainly. And same thing with infrastructure as a service. Now, when it comes to scaling, we want to think of scaling as a multifolded uh, approach. One of the things to sort of point out is that every service will have, of course, a different requirement for scaling. And one example would be a relational database versus a non-relational database. Relational databases typically scale horizontally very poorly. However, vertically, they'll scale a lot better. So with the relational database, with the really tight transaction requirement, it's not really possible to scale horizontally. There are cloud services out there that can facilitate that. Uh, but again, you're not going to um, be able to meet the requirements that you would get with horizontal scaling. Now, horizontal scaling, just to confirm, is scaling up where we add resources. Vertical, I said that backwards. Actually, vertical scaling is, of course, scaling up. And then horizontal is scaling out, uh, as we would say. Diagonal is scaling basically a combination of both. This is hybrid scaling, where we not only add additional resources, but we add additional nodes. Now, when it comes to cloud bursting, this is a term that is used to basically state that we're going to burst our private cloud resources or our on-prem resources to the public cloud. 
So when the demand goes up, we may not have resources local, but we already have the cloud ready to go. So we scale out using cloud resources. Now, cloud burst is the term you want to know. When it comes to scaling to the cloud, some other things to think about would be to ensure that we understand API requirements. So the APIs generally scale just as well as any of the services. That's generally not the issue. However, sometimes the protocols that are used or the languages used can differentiate REST APIs versus um, open APIs, for example, proprietary APIs. Developers will need to look at that. When it comes to scaling to the cloud, we want to check provider ports, make sure that we're using the appropriate port numbers. Uh, again, we want to validate also the security requirements as part of our federation process. We also need to consider SLAs. So the SLA is really important to understand. This is based going to measure uh, what we're paying for and generally have an agreement between you and the provider. This is going to identify KPIs generally. And then we'll also generally have direction on how we could validate uptime, how we would validate a response time, et cetera. When it comes to SLAs, this is again a baseline uh, generally that we want to use between the provider and the customer. Uh, SLA really should be specific, measurable, agreeable, realistic, and very specific as far as times. For example, if you go and Google the AWS EC2 SLA or the Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, they're very clear on what is the um, realistic expectations, what is performed by the vendor or the cloud provider, and what is performed by you. Also, they provide response time. They also provide uh, basically bill back or charge back um, uh, clauses as well. So, for example, if, uh, if they don't meet the requirements, you'll get a credit back based on whatever, um, whatever has occurred. And then when it comes to support. Now, support agreements is definitely something we want to look at. All the cloud providers have different levels of support. They have some free support. They have paid support. They have basically on-demand support. It all depends on what you're looking for, but what should occur in an agreement is that there is very specific response times. Is it a two hour response, a four hour response, 24 hour response? Identify those issues. Then key performance indicators. Now, this is basically what? An indicator, which is a value that we can basically determine um, what the what the uh, objective is. So, for example, a KPI uh, might be a specific response time in your support contract, like 24 hours. Or a typical example of a KPI uh, with, um, for example, uh, VMs or storage might be the availability. Is it four nines? Is it three nines? And then when it comes to cloud-specific uh, KPIs, these are generally what you'll see. You'll see availability. So that's going to be uh, specified basically in nines. Workloads, utilization. So workloads will identify the type of workloads, such as is it a virtual machine? Is it storage? Uh, also, too, um, is it uh, available? Is it not? Utilization. Uh, how do they handle uh, being utilized 50% of the resource, 20%, and then the allocation of the resources and then the response time. Change management. We also want to be aware of change processes because that can certainly affect the availability of our cloud services and could also affect our SLA's uh, support agreements as well. 
And then test tips. We need to know some terms like claw bursting. We want to know the difference between horizontal, vertical, and diagonal scaling. Also identify the SLA. And again, um, the main uh, points is really focused uh, on uh, scaling, availability, etc.